In the last episode, you noticed that we snapped devices to the faceplate of the robot, and you're wondering, how did that happen? Well, that's because you have to prepare it as a device. Um, we're going to build a mechanism out of a gripper, and we're going to create ports. And the ports are what establish the location of where the device gets snapped to the robot faceplate and also establishes the U-tool. If you're only using an arc welding torch, then all you need to do is establish the ports. There would be no kinematics. But in an example like this gripper, we're going to go through all of these steps to show you how to create a gripper, apply motion, uh, get it to snap to the faceplate with a tool point, uh, give it home positions and speeds and things. So stay tuned. Here it is. Okay, so today we're going to do some device building. I built a gripper in SOLIDWORKS, and now I'm going to save it on the 3D Experience platform. So I click on the 3DX icon, and it shows me all my objects and the statuses, and it says there's a lock required. So I'm going to lock that before I save it. So it gets saved on the platform. If I want to open it, I can just take this top node, and I can drag it and drop it on my desktop. So I drag it and I drop it. It opens 3D Experience Platform. Here's my object. In Robot Programming Essentials, I do not want to be in 3D simulation to do this. Okay, I'm more in more of a part design mode right now. So I'm going to click on this object and I'm going to create it as an object type. When I say generate a resource, I can change its identity. And I'm going to change it to tool equipment. So now the software knows that a, it could have a program, and B, it can have kinematics, and it's a resource. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some ports. A base port is used by Dalmia to mount the gripper to the faceplate of the robot. So I'm just going to put it right here in the middle of this um, polygon down here and say OK. When it gets snapped to the faceplate of the robot, I'll be able to adjust it later. The second thing I want to create is a tool center point, and this is going to be what the robot will calculate motion and position with when it's invoked. So I click on create tool center point, and I'm going to click on a, um, the polygon in the center of it, because I want it in the center of the gripper, but I want to base it off of where these gripper pads are located. So if I know the dimension, I can type it in here and say apply, or I could drag it and estimate it, but I know what the dimension is, so I just input it. And I say OK. I say OK. So once you have a base port and a tool center point, they're under the publications node. OK, so the next thing is we're going to use the kinematics wizard to put kinematics on it. And so what we're doing is we're going to add some degrees of freedom, and this is the base piece of geometry, the moving piece of geometry, and another moving piece of geometry. And so it color codes them for you. We know red is the base, and the moving is going to be prismatic. And it's going to move in relationship to the red part, and it is the blue part. So blue moves in relationship to red, and I need to identify an axis so it knows what direction the blue piece will move in. Then I move on to the second prismatic joint, which will be prismatic Q, and this is going to, I'm going to identify the direction with the axis, and the group is green. So this one is red, is green moves versus red versus this axis system that I've identified. And I say, OK. Now, I'm going to create a relationship, which means that one of these groups is going to move inversely to the other one. So I created degree of freedom one, and I gave the second degree or the second moving group, a relationship to the first one, which is equal, but it's inverse. So when I go into 3D simulation and I go to jog it, both the, both the pieces of geometry move equally, but inversely to each other. 
Okay, so now that it moves, I can establish some home positions. So the first home can be named open, and it's it's been modeled in the open position, so I just keep it. Second position is called closed, and I'm going to jog it to that closed position. And so if I know how many millimeters it moves, I can enter it in the dialog, or I can click until I think it's where it belongs. So there's open and there's closed, and I click on OK. Next, I can invoke some travel limits. And this way, when somebody implements this gripper inside of their work cell, they can't over travel the device because it will show them that they over traveled it. So they will be unable to use it in a, for an object that it, it can't open wide enough for. Then I can input a speed. And the speed of the gripper could be time-based or it could be travel-based. And that will, that will um, put the cycle time of the gripper into the simulation. So now as I jog it, you can see my travel limits. And don't forget to hit uh, Control-Save and save your work. And that's it.